Hey guys, it's me, Winner Papa, and let's talk a little bit more about Three Commas Gridbots. Gridbots are interesting. They allow you to set up a grid, and within this price grid, it will layer buy and sell actions in this specified range. Now, I've talked about Gridbots before, and if you missed that video, you can watch it here. It'll pop up. So we're gonna assume that you have watched that video. So we're gonna talk about some other concepts that will make grid botting more profitable and more successful for you. The first thing I wanna talk about is leverage. Now, while it's very tempting to use leverage with grid bots, can't personally recommend using, I wouldn't use leverage uh, when using a grid bot. We'll say it that way. Um, the reason is because when the bot continues to buy as the price falls and falls and falls, it's buying along, expecting to sell it at a higher price. But if the price keeps going, and depending on the leverage you're using, those positions can be liquidated. There aren't stop losses to use with grid bots. So you have to keep that in mind. Another thing about grid bots you have to understand is that not every chart is a good fit for a grid bot. What we really want to find are charts that are traveling within a channel, within a tight trading range, and it's fairly consistent. It's respecting the low and respecting the high of that channel. So these charts are a little bit difficult to find, and what ends up happening is that you discover them, but it's way too late. It's like two months too late. So I want to show you a little trick on how to use rather how to identify a good chart for grid botting. And I also want to take you through the new interface of Three Commas Grid Bots. They've revamped their website, looks great, super clean, love the new dark, the dark mode view. And I want to just run through a couple of changes, new updates as well that have happened to Three Commas. So let's work backward. Uh, first off, the grid bot icon has been um, very nicely improved. They've also updated the interface a bit more and it's just a little bit easier to use. So let's take a look at some active deals that I have running with the grid bot. I have three here. One is a ridiculous one that's just created for an example. It's not profitable, um, but to show you how it looks now, of course, we can see all of our transactions that have, have taken place um, and we can refresh our status here to see how things are going. We can share a grid bot, we can delete it, which will delete also all of the transactions. So be mindful of that. Um, we can stop the bot, which is nice. And then we can also edit. That's the most important part. I have a bot for Dash that I've created just here, and I'd like to tweak the settings. You can see here the icon is a little bit different. It says enable. So I actually haven't started this bot yet, and I don't want to just yet. I want to edit it. So I'm going to click the edit button, and now I can see the screen here. The nice thing about this is that maybe I want to modify my bot. We can pause our bots, we can adjust the grid, we can move things around. I'm going to change to the manual strategy, and I want to change my upper limit price to be here at 78. 309. I want to be within this range. And my low is fine, but I have too many grids. I want to increase, sorry, decrease the grids. So that way I'm making bigger profits. It may take longer for me to get these profits, but I'm okay waiting. If I look back at the history of the chart, it looks pretty good. I think this is a good, a good spread. I may want to adjust it a little bit more. Maybe if I went to seven, that would fill in the gaps and make it work. Yeah. It looks pretty good. So now that I'm happy with this, I have to figure out how much I want to actually put into this. Now this isn't going to use very much quantity per grid, meaning it's going to take use two dash. So it's going to take, oh, it's going to require $70 roughly on average times two. So $140 per grid. So one, two, three, four, five. We don't count all six. So it's five times 140. So that is roughly $700. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And after I've saved it, now it's updated all of my grids. It's all set to go. If I were to click here on the pair, I'm gonna see 
my trading view pop-up window. It's going to show me the daily and it's going to show me all of my grid lines that are here. Waiting, 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 waiting. And it's hard to see with the, the dark background right here, but this is telling me right here, sell. It's waiting. It Because it's down here, now it's just needing to buy in one spot. So what will happen, this is a good thing to keep in mind that we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, let me fix this ratio. There we go. Because I'm starting my grid bot down here, this is a good place to be. You you want to try to start your grid bot toward the bottom because you're buying everything that you're going to be selling at a higher price. Do you follow? So you're going to be buying a lot and then you're going to be selling, buying, selling, buying, selling. So I would much rather buy toward the bottom of the channel than buying right here at the top. So once I'm ready, I can just start the bot. I mean, the fact that we can now stop and edit our bots, that's big. Let's talk strategy. I'm looking at Dash USDT. Now there may be better pairs for grid botting. Perfectly fine. I mean, that's 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 within the realm of possibility. This isn't the best chart, and these settings are not the best settings, but I'm trying to prove a point here. One thing that makes a grid bot special is that it can trade within a range that's moving um, sideways. It's moving in a channel. And for any of you that have taken the Account Builders course, which you can access here from the Three Commas Academy, you learn about channel trading for AB trading. Now, it's not... Um, using grid bots isn't the same as channel trading necessarily, but the concept can be applied. For instance, we see this peak here in February that matches the peak here back in April. This low in December matches the low we see here in March. Therefore, we can say that the range for this grid bot on a macro scale, not a micro scale, a macro scale is this. Now, I've just eyed it, meaning I've looked at it and I've I put down 12 grids. So you can use different numbers. There's no magic number for grid quantity. Note that the um, smaller the grid, or the fewer grids there are, fewer lines there are, the you know the greater profits there are. But you're going to be, um, your bot's going to be not as active. It's going to take a long time for it to really be buying and selling, buying and selling, doing all the fun stuff because this is a macro strategy. So let me just get rid of this dialogue and I'm going to create this. Down here, I have another dash bot that's working off of a micro strategy. Let's check it out and hit the edit button. So you can see here the grid is much smaller. The price range is a lot tighter and it's only looking at 2.5 to 2.89% per grid. But you'll notice that this will be getting a lot more action as far as this sideways range and this channel or this is concerned. So I feel fairly confident with this grid. However, a new feature that was added to three commas is that if you have a running grid bot and you notice, I think it's going to move out of this trend, you can pause it. Notice that these are both paused. They haven't been enabled yet. So I can pause my bot and I can adjust my grid bot. Let's say it's going to move down. I think it's going to move lower so I can set my lower limit there. Uh, sorry, my upper limit will now become my lower limit. And now my lower limit, I'm going to move it down here. So this way, when the price falls down, it's going to buy buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, buy, sell as it goes down. So you're using the same idea and it's the same bot, the same allocation, the same quantity per grid, but you're editing it and you're changing it as the channel changes, as the chart changes. Now this will require a bit of maintenance on your part to check charts, but I mean, everything's going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of work. So in the introduction, I talked about um, a trick or a tip on how to find charts early because this chart was great for setting up a grid bot back in March of 2020. It's not so good now. I mean, it could be, but it you've missed a lot of action. So what do we look for in a chart? Well, if we think about how this chart right here looks, 
And again, I'm going to point right back to the Account Builders course. It's an inexpensive entry-level course that anyone could accomplish, anyone could work through it and understand the concepts. But in it, when you learn about channel trading, you'll learn to identify just horizontal lines of support and resistance. And from that, you can see where a chart may be uh, fluctuating between um, a support and resistance line. I'm going to show you another chart, uh, Monero, on the BNB chart. I'm showing you this chart mainly because, to me, it even though this is moving up slowly, and uh, sorry, I'm trying to get this zoomed in. There we go. So even though we're seeing a general uptrend, you can see that it's really following this idea of a trend. Let me just move this up to like a ridiculous price so we get out of the way. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna add a horizontal line here and just do a little bit of this and just eyeballing it, okay? So if I were to find Monero early on, I would wanna look for big rejections like here. If we go back to the beginning of the chart, this is a great, um, this is a great early on rejection where the price moves up and then it falls down. And then we have a support line that's shown right here, right here automatically. This is like super clear as day. Here's my top of my channel. Here's the bottom. So if I were to put a grid between 2692, two point, we'll do seven, three, we're just going to go just above it. And I'll do the upper limit at 3.78. Now I have to get rid of my drawings. There we go. Actually, that's a little bit too low. There we go. So already, I mean, this is 10. Uh, it's not so great at 10. Oh, let me just get rid of this warning message. I hate looking at that. There we go. There we go. I know, I know, I know. You don't have to tell me. So looking at this right away, if we, this is like a fresh chart and I know that Monero is a top 20, you know, top 30 coin. Binance is top 10. This pair, uh, this pairing is pretty good to me as far as um, it being a reputable pair. So I see a rejection. I see a support. So I'm going to, I'm going to put my grid here. Let's see what would happen with a grid, a profit range of 3.8 to 4.46 here. And this is the daily. So this is going to take time, but look at how it just keeps bouncing in. And out of this range, look at this. So it falls down. There we go. Back up. And it's staying right in. Look at all these wicks. So you would be participating in all of these wicks. Boom, boom, boom. Going up. You're still in. You're still participating. You're still in. Great opportunity right there. You're still in. The, the Still in the range. And this is all the way back from when we first started it. And now we're... Slightly now, this is where if I'm watching the bot and I see this happen, then I would probably pause the bot and move my upper limit price to 4.1. So I'll actually do four point. I'm gonna stay just below. So I'll do 4.09 because I want to participate. I don't want to aim for the tops. I want to be in the market. And now for my low, I'm gonna shoot up a little bit higher to three, three, two, seven, six. That looks good. So now that this happens, I see, oh, there's a lot of support. There's a lot of um, demand for it. And people feel like this is enough. This is, they won't, they won't pay more for this. So this is now a good range. Again, very similar grid width. Let's see how it holds up. It's playing right within it. Look at how perfect that is playing within it. Look at this. This would be a moneymaker right there. Boom, boom, boom. I mean... It's pretty good, right? And look at how well it's obeying this line. I didn't practice this. I don't like to practice this. I like to just find charts that I know that would be a good fit, but I don't know what grids to use. And I've just used the basic 10 grid quantity. I didn't think about, well, should it be more or less? I'm just just looking at, just looking at it, okay? So we can see, uh, okay, now it's moving higher. We see a rejection up here. So let's move it up higher, 4.24, 4. .24, 4 Two, four. And let's see what happens. We're going to keep our low where it was. All right. All right. Oh, and now I see some buying support off here. It looks like we could be moving higher. So I'm going to move it up to three point. We'll do seven, six. There we go. Let's see what happens. 
Ah, falls out of the range. So this is the one time, the 7th of September. Let's see what happens though. And here we are to current day. So let's talk about time. Here we go. Two weeks. For two whole weeks, you are not participating if you are monitoring this and if you set it up from here, from the 24th of April, all the way into the 8th of September for 500 days. Profit. Boom, 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 boom. Man, I wish I set up a grid bot on this because it would it would have been killing it. Now you do need to be careful because you need to check in on the bot. You can't just set it and forget it. So the dangers of this are if you were to, uh, let me find a different pair. We're just gonna do um, Bitcoin actually. So here's an example of a chart that may not be so great for just set it and forget it grid botting. And the reason is because Bitcoin just keeps making higher highs recently. It's on a clear upward trajectory. It has been after the dump, of course, but even then you can see it's just going higher and higher. Have there been pullbacks? Of course. But this would be a lot of maintenance. Um, and it's also, it's such a huge range that it would be unrealistic to say, well, my low is going to be 7104 and my high is going to be uh, 13. There we go. Even though the grid width looks fantastic, you're not going to be participating often enough to make this really profitable. It's not the best setup ever. It's just too erratic. It's not traveling in a very nice and smooth channel. I mean, take a mental screenshot of this and let's go back to Monero on the BNB chart. Right? There's a, there's a slow upward trajectory, but look at how much this is just going back and forth. This is what you want to find. Um, we were also looking at Dash. Dash is another example that even though it's had some erratic moves, it's, it is actually traveling pretty much sideways. It's traveling in this left to right motion right here. It's in a grid. It's not in a grid, good grief. It's in a channel. Do you see it? I hope so. I think you can agree with me that three commas grid bots are powerful and there are loads of other strategies that people are using and they're talking about it on the three commas grid bot chat channel on telegram so if you're someone that really is interested in learning more about grid bots i highly suggest this channel if you have other questions about grid bots reference the wiki reference the manual um, it's linked here on three commas site and of course if you have any questions at all please send a message first to the three commas help desk. It's much better, much faster, and they're gonna make sure that you get taken care of, okay? So until the next time, stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.